Now, this is subject matter that our next guest knows very well. Rich Gelfond is the CEO of IMAX. Uh, he's been thinking about all of this, including the opportunity to expand, particularly in China as we look ahead. Rich Gelfond joining us now. Thanks, as always, for being with us. Great to be with you, John. And uh, I want to start with some, some very strong statements, Rich, that you made this week. You were asked about the future of the industry, this whole experience we've been living through, people watching movies from home versus going to the theater. I want to give you an opportunity to basically explain to our audience what it was that you said uh, this week. I've said so many things this week, John, as you <laughs> indicated, there's a lot going on. So I'm not sure which thing you're re referring to. But, um, you know, in general, I think that the vaccines are such positive news and you know, depending on the rollout, I expect cinema to come back to normal at some point in 2021. And the reason is that this isn't guesswork. In IMAX is in 82 countries and Asia has been open for around six months. And where cinema has been open and where people feel comfortable, the box office has been very strong. So in the third quarter, China was 100 percent of last year. For the second half of the year, it's 75% in Japan. Um, we've set records uh, with the biggest grossing Japanese movie ever. And we're at 100% there, Taiwan, Korea. So people have this debate existentially, are people going back to the movies? So 100 years of movie going and um, social interaction and going out with your family and others is not going away because of a pandemic. Obviously, as you alluded to, um, there are a lot of people poking, and tr there, there have been debates about windowing and debates about whether movies go here or there um, for decades. And, you know, the movie business has overcome television, it's overcome radio, it's overcome DVDs. So I, I think once things open up, it'll be just fine. Well, let, let's build on that, because um, the decision by Warner Brothers, for example, um, which is obviously competing with other streaming services like the one that Disney rolled out, um, really made headlines when they decided in the United States that they were going to take their film slate for next year and make it available on HBO Max in the United States uh, at the same time that they're going into theaters. And just to clarify, I mean, the way the, the deals work, it's a little different here in Canada. A lot of the HBO uh, content is uh, actually involved in a partnership with our parent company, but the theatrical story is a different one. Um, you knew this was coming to a certain degree because you'd had some conversations with them, but you have been critical since the announcement has come up. So give us your sense on, on what they're doing and, and, and what you feel about whether it will actually work for them. So starting a couple months ago, um, I engaged in some conversations with them about their need to release some movies during the pandemic. And they did mention you know, long, uh, over a year releasing every movie on the streaming service. And I tried to explain to them why I didn't think that was a very good idea. And I'll do that, go back to that in a second. And then we agreed, um, and much of the industry agreed, that to, that Wonder Woman being released day and day uh, was a necessity because of the pandemic. They've been sitting on the movie for a long time. It was timely to release it. As you know, the pandemic's gotten worse in much of the world right now. So doing that kind of made sense. Then all of a sudden, about a week and a half ago, they announced that they were going to take every movie until the end of 2021 and put it on the streaming at the same time as theatrical. Now, there was a slight benefit for IMAX for that, which is in countries like where we're open and doing well, as an age. Asia, which I discussed before, it opened a lot more movies, Hollywood movies, that would be available sooner. But it also did a, it had a couple of side effects, which I think just were not good business for Warner and not good business um, for the industry. And primarily, I thought the biggest mistake was they did it through the end of 2021. So they kind of said to the world, that's how long the pandemic is going to last. And in fact, if you listen to Dr. Fauci, and you listen to others, and you look at the progress the vaccine has made, you know, I just think that's not good science. And in fact, at IMAX, we think the theaters will start to open in uh, areas around, um, around April, May, and I think they'll be back to some semblance of normal. 
by over the summer. So I think by, mm. you know, that narrative, first of all, a bad narrative. But second of all, these directors and the talent, they made movies for the giant screen. And IMAX is obviously the biggest of all. So um, what they were saying to the filmmakers and the talent was what you thought was a movie is now a TV show. And that, that's caused a ruckus in Hollywood and tremendous backlash. And we're now in the middle of that. Well, you raise an interesting point. I mean, there is a reason why a lot of the airline executives have been very careful when it comes to how many planes are out, what they're saying to passengers about the rollout, because if you say too much, do you miss that opportunity on the other side of this? So I understand what you're saying there. Let's talk about Canada, because maybe it's a different situation here when we look at 2021. How do you feel about how things will play out at the theater? I, I would also add, um, you know, you, you've talked in the past about the whole deal between them and, and, and Cineworld and, and obviously that uh, has not played out as Cineplex expected at the end of the day. Have you been talking with them at all about the, the, the movie theater rollout in 2021 in this country? Well, sure. I mean, we're very close uh, to Cineplex. We're very close to Cineworld. We have frequent dialogue with both. The one thing we don't talk about is um, the deal that didn't happen, as you could appreciate. John, when two friends of yours are in a dispute, you don't jump in the middle of it. You like to support both of them. And you know, as, as far as I understand, that Cineplex is in pretty good financial shape. They've done um, um, some capital raise recently. You know, and I think they're going to open um, when theaters open. I would guess, and, and to be clear, I'm not an expert on what the rollout is um, in Canada of the vaccine. But based on what I do know, I would think it's similar to what it's going to be here in the States. And I think the trajectory of opening um, will be similar. The one difference might be is the Chinese, the, uh, the Canadian um, regulatory scheme is, um, is uh, more um, exacting than it is in many states in the U.S. And as you know, Canada has probably done a better job in terms of controlling when things open and regulating what's going on. So I, my guess is that um, Canada, at least Ontario, won't be the first place to open in the world. Um, but I think when it's safe, it will reopen and people will go. Well, we are running some headlines in the province of Ontario. We're just learning 2,432 new cases of COVID. Unfortunately, that marks another single day record. So the uncertainty is very real out there. Um, you did talk a little bit about China. I, I want to talk about that because it is a good case study where you are seeing some kind of normalcy return. And you're also committing to uh, opening more screens in that country going forward. Can you shed some light on your goals on that front? Yeah, it's really hard for, to believe for those of us sitting in Toronto or New York or Los Angeles that China's pretty much back to normal. So people aren't wearing masks, restaurants are open, the hotel capacities are 70, 80 percent. There aren't tourists coming in, but people feel normal. And as I said, when you look at the theater attendance, there's a lot of pent up demand. And some people have uh, compared 2020 to 1920 and the roaring 20s. And people just want to get out and they want to come back and they want to go to the movies. And especially when you look at places like California, where Hollywood is based. Um, you know, it's hard to get perspective on the rest of the world. But I'm on the phone you know, almost every day um, with my colleagues in China, and things really are back to normal. And again, as you said, everybody's afraid to predict. But I actually think once the vaccinations hit a certain point, it's going to happen faster than people think. And I think this is going to go in the rearview mirror faster than we think. And, and, and it's not just a guess. I've seen it in a lot of those Asian countries.